if the Jets are now playing hardball with Aaron <laughs> Rodgers at this stage in the game, they are idiotic. He's got a wish list, according to Diana Rossini, of free agents that he would like the Jets to sign before he commits or that he would like the, to sign. Right, right, right. They it, include Alan Lazard. Makes sense. Randall Cobb. Why not? Mercedes Lewis. Sure. And Odell Beckham Jr. That one's harder. <laughs> <laughs> that one's probably might be the best of the bunch if he's healthy. Yeah, I understand. Uh, they could sign Randall Cobb and Mercedes Lewis tomorrow. They're, they're way, you know, they're not signing anywhere else. Right. Alan Lazard, you could probably get in. I think you have to pay a lot of money for Odell Beckham Jr., and I know they're renegotiating Aaron Rodgers' contract, but I can't imagine. How are the Jets possibly going to fit him in? They're going to make it work. Like, here's the thing. The salary cap is a figment of our imagination. We all know that's true. In every sport, yeah. teams find a way to make this happen. For $20 million a year well, for maybe Odell Beckham? it's Bagel? not $20 million. I mean, I don't know. Peter King scoffed at that number. Who knows about what Odell's going to get? But here's the thing about what the Jets are doing. You went out to California, you flew the private jet with Woody Johnson and all the brass, and you went and met with him. Yeah. What exactly did you talk about? What, putting some kind of dark cave in Times Square? What did you talk about? What? Obviously, Rogers wants his friends with him. And now to play hardball, if indeed that's what's going on, this is just my read, now to play hardball when you've basically already committed to him is insane. Well, I don't... I don't see that scenario. Because it's insane, I don't think it happened. Because, obviously, there was a report this morning that they were on the brink of signing Lazard. Right. Alan Lazard. So what happened that, by the way? Because it was supposed to happen at 10 this morning. Well, it's only 3 o'clock Eastern time. Well, it's weird. Because things move really fast in the legal tampering stage. <laughs> yes, that's by true. By the way, we are still in the legal tampering stage. But Lazard was at the finish line. Cobb and Mercedes Lewis. They, they're on. They're on they're board. Basically, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So is it maybe Odell Beckham where uh, Rodgers like pay this man $20 million a year? Because if that's what they're playing hardball on, Maggie, I can see that. Because if it's a really, really strong commitment to a 30-year-old Odell Beckham with an injury history, maybe you play some hard. Would you admit that that is maybe a smart place to play hardball? No. No. There's an old saying. It's a cliche. It's called in for a penny, in for a pound. You're in for Aaron Rodgers for a penny. You're in for a pound with everything that comes with Rodgers. You should have thought, if you're the Jets, you should have thought if giving him the keys to the kingdom was a good idea before you flew out on the private jet. But because now you can't turn back. Like, you're here, unless you want to pivot to Lamar Jackson. Okay, you want to start negotiating yeah. with Lamar Jackson? What, over Twitter? Like, he doesn't even have an agent you can go through. You're, that's a, that could be a whole other situation that's not going to be easy to navigate. You're here with Rodgers. If the last piece of the puzzle is Odell, you suck it up and you no. sign Odell. Honestly, I, I don't really believe it. Odell's going to call Dallas before the Jets. He's going to be a bidding war. And the other thing, too, is what's Rodgers going to do? Why, why do you, all of a sudden he have all the leverage? He's, he's got no choice but the Jets anyway. He's got nowhere else to go. Well, that might be true, but right now the Jets need him more than he needs the Jets. I'm not 100% sure that's true. Where else, I mean, he'll find well, another not, suitor. Do you think mm, – do you think anyone wants this headache right now? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, listen, if Odell ends up signing with the Dallas Cowboys, then it doesn't matter. But I listen, thought we Odell... heard the Cowboys with Odell for three months last year and nothing I, happened. I read that tweet as, you better bring Randall Cobb in, and I kind of want Mercedes Lewis. If you could get Odell, that'd be nice. That is not. That can't possibly be. The, he doesn't fit in that list of other four guys. The other guys are pure Aaron Rodgers guys. Odell Beckham Jr., I mean, there's got to be eight teams that are offering money right now. Well, we don't know. Because there's got to be somebody. Why would they not be offering Odell a good contract? Well, because we have no idea what he's looking for. Is he looking for high average but a short contract? Is he looking for more years? Like, we're not sure. And if you're wondering, Aaron Rodgers and Odell Beckham, like, how does that? Where do those two guys come together? They've never played on the same team before. Well, here was Aaron Rodgers back in October talking about his friendship with Odell on the Pat McAfee show. Odell and I have been friends for a number of years now, and so we keep in, in contact, uh, you know, often. We talked uh, at you know, various times over the years, and obviously with a player like that, you, you're always uh, hoping that there's a, a time where you can figure things out and play together. But, um, 
but he's a special talent, and I was really happy for him last year and see how they used him in L.A. and uh, for him to get a ring, and obviously he was dominating the game uh, to start that game uh, until the injury. What Aaron Rodgers wants right now is what he's going to get from the Jets. I think they've already, like, the meeting of the minds happened in California last week. So now it's just about ironing out the details. And if this is an important detail to Aaron Rodgers, you're here to pivot away from him. And we don't know who else is going to be in the Lamar Jackson sweepstakes or if the Jets even want to do that. Do they want to commit $230 million to somebody? You got to get this done. Well, okay, let's let's play this out. Say the Jets come in and they don't have the highest offer for Odell Beckham Jr. and they can't sign him. What you think Aaron Rodgers is turning away? There's no way. I don't think so, but you know, t- uh, honestly, as a credit to Rodgers, if it's playing out as I think it is, yeah. what a good friend he is. I mean, yeah, he's not signing because he's using his leverage to get everybody else signed. I mean, that's that's BFF. But doesn't this feel a little more about era, uh, Randall Cobb and Mercedes Lewis? Because I, here's – I'm curious. I think Alan Lazard is a really good receiver. I think a lot of teams would want him, and I think he'd be a good jet even if you can't get Aaron Rodgers. He knows Nathaniel Hackett's route tree for what that's worth. Sure. <laughs> I have trouble taking that one seriously. Yeah, right. Uh, Can he hit and, a 64-yard field goal if necessary? And it makes perfect sense. Here's the thing about Odell. I don't know that Odell knows that offense. I don't know that Odell fits into that Jets offense. Probably fit in any offense. He'd look good in L.A. But I I don't know. Odell is not as important. You better get Nathaniel Hackett. You better recreate that Green Bay offense really fast. There can't be a Brett Favre learning curve. So to me... I didn't even take Odell's name in there seriously. You could be right. I, I, I don't know. think you, that was more you, wishful thinking. If you played with LaFleur, yeah. then I feel like you can transition to whatever the Jets are going to run. Don't you think it's going to be a lot of the LaFleur oh. Hackett stuff that they were running? I mean, it's fine. And if, if you've played for a LaFleur, it means you've basically played for a McVay. So... Odell that, should that, be fine be right. with it. You, that, that's a good point. You could be right. I Not to no do the idea. whole coaching tree thing. But I think he's going to be fine. If you've played for a LaFleur, it means you can play for a McVay. means you can play for a Shanahan. We know how this But goes. the Green Bay thing is very West Coast. And we saw what happens when you put a Russell Wilson into that offense and he doesn't know the offense. Yeah. It's a complete disaster. So I, I, and you're right. That's, that's what that's training a good camps point. for. <laughs> you might yeah. have to show up. Maybe, but even so, <laughs> Brett, well, yeah, I hate yeah. to go back to New York, and I know our producer Mike Sanford keeps pointing out they were eight and three before Favre got hurt, but he did not know that offense. He he took him forever to finally catch up to speed. I would hope that the Jets have high. Did you feel like Brett Favre had his nose in the playbook? Yeah, but did you see the next year? (laughs) I mean, the next year he was MVP. He's 33 touchdowns, seven picks. I know, but fair to question where Brett Favre's head was. I actually totally disagree with that because he showed he was dominant the next year. He was probably the best player in the NFL. Yeah, in Minnesota. In Minnesota, right, because he knew the offense. Uh, You don't think that there's a time to gel. I think that it's going to be hard. I don't think Aaron Rodgers can afford any sort of he has no runway here they better be as good as they're going to be immediately well that's true but if it was just about Cobb and Mercedes Lewis then this would be done if it's about Lazard Mm. okay maybe he's got a little bit more of a market for him but you're right I think that the Jets might want Alan Lazard even if Aaron Rodgers wasn't going to be there depending on the money now this is interesting from DJ Witz who's in the chat what is this telling all the other Jets wide receivers and tight ends What it's telling them is that if you have not caught on by now that this is the Aaron Rodgers show, then here's your first lesson. Because nobody really cares what you think. (laughs) Are people not getting this, right? (laughs) Like, Rodgers is coming to the Jets, and that means he is the Jets. You might not like it. Thomas L. in the chat. By my calculations, at this moment in time, Rodgers is the Packers quarterback, the Jets, the Jets GM and the owner of the Bears, which is impressive. He's got the power here. I mean, you and I disagree on that. I think that he's got the power, and if the Jets are the last ones to know, then they're going to be in trouble, and this Hmm. is going to be a struggle. Who are these Jets wide receivers that are? Well, Garrett Wilson. (laughs) Well, go Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson's fine. We assume he's he's fine. He's begging for. I mean, it seems like Garrett Wilson got got by the internet yesterday. Uh, Uh, Sort of. He he got but got by Trey Wingo's. That's true. He got got by Trey Wingo. Being retweeted by Dove Kleiman. Yeah. But <laughs> I think Trey well. Wingo was right, by the way. <laughs> I think he was probably right, too. He's never been wrong about Rodgers. He broke it last year about Rodgers coming back. So he was probably right. And Garrett Wilson secretly knows this is happening. Now, the other guys, Elijah Moore, I don't know why. He's been on the trade market. Everybody lists him as receivers. And Corey Davis was not good. 
He no, is not. They paid that too was much a, for Davis. That, so they need to start over wide receiver anyway. Well, they have a Denzel Mims they've also been trying to trade for mm, he, since the moment he was uh, drafted. There was so much hope for that guy, and he does not get on the field. So they're going to start over anyway. I just think everything is fine. I think everything is fine. I don't think there's any chance. If I'm the Jets, I'm not as afraid. What, Aaron Rodgers is as committed as they are. What's he going to do? Green Bay is well, so Green Bay's out, out. They've so moved on. <laughs> yes, they there moved can't on. possibly be another suitor, can there? Never know. 855-2124-CBS. Not now. It Does your darkness retreat vision come true <laughs> and Miami jumps Ooh. in? Are they still in? No. I think when they Why gave all that they... money to Mike White, I think. It's <laughs> backup money. Yeah. They gave a lot of money to they... Mike White, and they picked up Tua's option. But God, The darkness retreat failed me. Damn it. As a football fan, though. <laughs> it was only have... five minutes. Yeah, you have to wonder. As a as a casual or observant fan, why doesn't he go to Miami? Why, if Jets play the slightest bit of hardball, I say I'm going to Miami for free. Honestly, bring Odell, <laughs> Miami. <laughs> yeah, you got Waddle, you got Tyree Kill, Odell. Let's make this thing really hum. Eight five five two one two four CBS. I want Odell to go to Dallas. I don't know why, because I've sort of become this. Dak Prescott stand through the years for arguing <laughs> yeah. with you. I've been sticking up for Dak Prescott. <laughs> yes. And they lost Noah Brown today. Odell makes more sense in Dallas than the Jets because the Jets already have Garrett Wilson, who's awesome. Yeah, but Odell's not a number one. Yeah, yeah I don't know if he Dallas sees it that Dallas has CeeDee Lamb who's a number, their number one. That's true. I don't know why. For me, uh, Feels like Odell, a cowboy? He feels like a cowboy. He's big. And, you know, there's only so much oxygen in the room in New York, and Aaron sucks it all up. I get it. It's going to be wild. I remember Baker Mayfield when he was in Cleveland. Yeah. Odell Beckham Jr. was there, and all of a sudden Cleveland became the must-watch team in the league. They were all the most interesting. Odell makes everything interesting. He does, and I think, you know, even though you think that wide receivers should basically get taken behind the woodshed when they turn 30, <laughs> I, I still think that many people believe that he's still – is a serviceable receiver. Well, he what? hasn't played that much, so I'm going to give him a couple, a couple extra. Yeah, no, I'm going to give him a couple extra years on his legs. I'm not going to use my 30 and there's a shelf. Oh, life. nice. He gets a special exemption. He does, from except the that block. if the Jets pay him a lot of money, he will definitely get hurt. <laughs> Jeez, eight five five two one two four. I'm yes. just saying, you know, you know this Jets team better than most. They're not as – well, I was going about to say they're not as snake-bitten, but then I remember their second overall quarterback is a total bust who they told to go read a book. Um, are they as snake-bitten as Jets teams in the past? I would say it's about par for the course for Jets <laughs> history. I don't think it's, like, any worse, any better. I mean, you know – Former draft picks, yeah. like, you know, Gino got punched in the face, you know? Zach Eight, Wilson yeah. wants to date Gino's mom. I don't know. It's like, well, it's, <laughs> it all comes out in the wash. When Gino got punched in the face, I'm like, that dude is going to show up in eight years and get a giant contract. <laughs> don't <laughs> They're very sleep predictable. on that guy. Don't sleep on that guy. Give him a few years to sort of hang out there. Yeah, I, I do think the Jets definitely have some history, especially because they're repeating history and going with a Packers grade. They will not go Honestly, nine and seven. We the know farm that. stuff seemed like pretty simple compared to what this is now. Yeah. yeah. But, again. but this is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers also loves to seal the headlines, Maggie. So maybe that's all there is. Maybe we're overcomplicating it. Maybe the deal is done and Aaron is just messing around with it. I like your theory that he was saving for the Pat McAfee show. I know. I thought that was a good one. I thought uh, he was going to do a McAfee thing. I think you still could be right because it could be next Tuesday. Can you imagine if we are doing oh, this next oh, no. Tuesday? <laughs> Can't be. Wait. This is Aaron Rodgers' time. Yeah, this is not Rogers. NFL. He doesn't go to the NFL schedule. Anything that can be done in a week will be done in four months. Exactly. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, it's his world. We're all living in it. The people who need to read that memo the most are the Jets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this, is, this is your life now. This is what you signed up for. Yeah, but the, again, the Jets were not, not choosing this life out of a position of strength necessarily. As you mentioned, they drafted Zach Wilson, and look where that went. They they basically, I think they have to ask, acquiesce, is that the right word, to Aaron Rodgers' demands, as yeah. you said. I think you put an extra K in there. <laughs> acquiesce. No, I, I think I put a, an extra Q in there, right? too. Yeah, no? it's just acquiesce. Or acquiesce, yeah. <laughs> acquiesce? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're right. the Ivy Leaguer here, but I think we're right. A C Q U I E S C E. Congrats, Dartmouth.